when you have, let's say, infectious disease problems, uh, um, especially in swine, there is a lot of complex diseases. If you look to PRDC, uh, Porcine Respiratory Disease Complex, yeah, multiple pathogens can be involved. And the frustration I had was, yeah, you always have to make prior selection. Uh, you have to go with targeted PCRs or panels to certain pathogens. But uh, if you tick the wrong boxes, yeah, then, then you miss a lot of information. And I think it's very important to have kind of a, let's say, full overview of the disease complex to take accurate actions. So um, that's how we started thinking, like, yeah, can we not just use sequencing of pathogens at random? And so without having a very targeted approach, but just have a sample, sequence it, and then determine what is inside. So it's a kind of a total opposite way of thinking. Welcome to the Swine Health Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine health research digested for you. My name is Dr. Clayton Johnson. I'm the host of the podcast and joining me in our podcast studios this week is Dr. Sebastian Toons. Dr. Toons is the CEO and founder of Pathosense. Sebastian, uh, it was great to see you at a meeting here in the United States not too long ago and glad to hear you had good travels back uh, over into uh, Belgium. Um, why don't we start with an introduction? If you would, uh, introduce yourself for the audience. Yeah, thanks Clayton and uh, thanks for having me today. So um, indeed, my name is Sebastian Toons. Um, my background, I'm uh, also a veterinarian, um, graduated in 2010. And then I went into research, let's say. So um, I worked as a PhD candidate and postdoc uh, at the Laboratory of Virology at Ghent University. I worked a lot on uh, rotavirus infections in pigs. Um, and uh, let's say during my postdoc, I came in contact with nanopore sequencing, um, started experimenting with it. And then uh, let's say we had kind of a, let's say, crazy idea to start building a company, um, So which we did. Um, and uh, this led to the spin-off company, uh, Pathosense. Uh, where we built kind of a, let's say, a diagnostic platform using nanopore sequencing uh, to diagnose infectious uh, in diseased animals. So that's, um, let's say, my, my, uh, my background a bit. Uh, fantastic introduction. And we're here, Sebastian, to talk about the, the spinoff that you've developed um, out of uh, Ghent University that is Pathosense, um, based on the nanopore sequencing technology and its ability to serve as a diagnostic assay. Um, we've got a lot of good technical people who listen to the podcast, Sebastian, so let's nerd out a little bit. Like, <laughs> talk to them about the nanopore sequencing. What is that stuff and why does it lend itself to being a good diagnostic assay for infectious agents of pigs? I, I must say it's, it's all started a little bit uh, of kind of a, sometimes a frustration I had as a vet um, when you have, let's say, infectious disease problems, uh, um, especially in swine. There is a lot of complex diseases. If you look to PRDC, uh, Porcine Respiratory Disease Complex, yeah, multiple pathogens can be involved. And the frustration I had was, yeah, you always have to make prior selection. Uh, you have to go with targeted PCRs or panels to certain pathogens. But uh, if you tick the wrong boxes, yeah, then, then you miss a lot of information. And I think it's very important to have kind of a, let's say, full overview of the disease complex to take accurate actions. Uh, so um, that's how we started thinking, like, yeah, can we not just use sequencing of pathogens at random? Uh, so without having a very targeted approach, but just have a sample, sequence it, and then determine what is inside. So it's a kind of a, a total opposite way of thinking. And um, we started developing, uh, let's say, this platform. Uh, so that was during my period at uh, Ghent University still then, uh, doing some first proof of concepts. And then it led really to the, to the spin-off company where we launched this diagnostic test, uh, especially now in Europe. Uh, so, um, And um, what we developed in the end is kind of a complete, let's say, sample collection to diagnostic interpretation platform. Uh, so a sampling kit that vets can use to collect samples in the field, but also to purify them. Uh, then it goes through the labs. The nanopore sequencing is being run on these samples. And then it gives an overview in the end of all the viruses and bacteria in the sample, uh, but without having then to make a prior selection. And in this way, um, when you look, for instance, to PRDC, it's very interesting because we know always the usable suspects, PERS, influenza, but you get a, a new dimension on it. So... Uh, there are novel uh, viruses or neglected viruses that uh, pop up and they can also, let's say, 
um, contribute to the to the disease complex. And I think this is really a valuable, uh, let's say, yeah, addition to the toolbox of the of the vets. So. What uh, sample types can you use, Sebastian? Can you use kind of the classic sample types we're familiar with, you know, the population samples like oral fluids or processing fluids or, you know, the individual pig tissues, the, the serum? What's possible on the samples? What we typically say is like we have this kind of diagnostic tool. So it's better to focus a little bit on really samples that uh, represent the, the site of the pathogen replication. So... Uh, what does it mean if you look to PRDC? I would go and do a little bit more effort and look for really diseased animals. So in the context of disease, acute piglets that are coughing, uh, and then tr maybe try to get the tracheobronchial swaps. That's we see in Europe, a lot of vets are uh, doing this, and they can really get very high pure samples from the deep airways, uh, which is which is very nice. Um, when you have diarrhea, of course, it's easy. You can take some rectal swaps from multiple pigs in a herd, uh, but also like tissue samples. If you have uh, necropsy and you see like um, uh, histological uh, or let's say pathological lesions, yeah, then it's really nice and you can use our swap to really um, collect uh, the, let's say the you make some incisions in the tissues and you can really collect uh, material with the swap and have a very, very nice sample. Um, so in general, we, we really recommend to focus on diseased animals with this kind of technology, because if you go for more population type of samples like oral fluids, yeah, you know, this is kind of a dirty sample. Uh, it's like uh, containing a lot of microbiome uh, from the pig, and it's much more difficult to fish for viruses that could be relevant, let's say, for uh, yeah, the respiratory disease complex and so on. So, um, so it's a little bit more effort, but I think it's worth it to, to do that. What is the timeline for running these assays? If, uh, if I collect a sample, how fast can I get results? So at the moment, it's one week. Um, so it's... Um, it's of course PCR is there a little bit faster, yeah, so then you, you can have one day. Um, so it's it's more kind of a how we see it now. It's like positioning it like a, a helicopter overview of a farm um, to get kind of a let's say observation what is happening there, and then I think a lot of vets can uh, position it like okay we narrow now with some PCRs to do some mass screenings, uh, and then uh, then but they, at least you have this uh, overview of the entire complex which is which is really valuable then so. How um, how common is the nanopore sequencing in general? Um, is it a situation where this is brand new technology and we should expect the price to come down, you know, fairly aggressively because it's new technology? Or has this sequencing been around for a while and the price is probably going to be pretty flat because the, the the easiest parts of innovating the cost have already been accomplished? Well, I think there's still a lot of room for, uh, let's say, improvement. Yeah? So. Um, so with Patosense, uh, we have also uh, a partnership with Oxford Nanopore Technologies. So we, the Patosense test is a nanopore compatible product. Uh, we're launching this now in Europe. Uh, so we have now seven countries uh, where they can um, use the test in Europe. But the goal is to expand that. Uh, so um, also the cost of sequencing will go down. Uh, so that's uh, it has always been going down. Uh, so that will continue like that. Um, so um, that's also what we, we want to establish in the end. It should become, uh, let's say, even cheaper yeah, so that um, yeah, at the price of a PCR, maybe in the end, uh, maybe in a few years, uh, then, then yeah, that you have all this information that would be amazing, I think so. Um, but still, I must say it's not, I, in my opinion, it's not, uh, not too expensive. So, um, but um, yeah sequencing will, will become cheaper and cheaper. So, Is the cost or the timeline at all influenced today by how many results you get? So if I find uh, 20 viruses and get a full sequence from 20 viruses, does it take longer for the assay to run or cost more for the assay to run than if you just find two of them or it's the same no matter what? It doesn't matter. Um, so it doesn't, the, the, the cost is of course influenced by the number of samples you can put on a, on a cartridge, let's say. Uh, but uh, it's like it doesn't matter if we look for 20 viruses or uh, 100, let's say. Um, so um, that's that's not uh, not having an impact. So are the um, cartridges commercially available? Is that is that a product that Pathosense will market the cartridge itself, so a producer could do this testing on their own? Or no, it'll be you'll use the cartridges and you'll provide the information as the service. 
Yeah, so basically our model is like at the moment. So um, so we, we work with, uh, let's say, established diagnostic laboratories uh, in Europe at the moment. Uh, so um, so they what they will do is they uh, will have nanopore sequencer in-house. Um, we train them to get, let's say, the, the, the right know-how and the technology to run this assay. And then there is a lot of data, of course, that needs to be analyzed. So uh, this data is uploaded to our cloud platform automatically. And then we feed back a report that is curated uh, and then so that they can uh, uh, move ahead with that. So um, that's, let's say, the model at the moment. Um, I'm quite, let's say, um, yeah, uh, convinced that this is the, the right way also um, because having it on site, um, like on a farm, I'm, I'm not a very big believer of that, um, let's say, uh, because it's a complex disease yeah, of course if you look to it there will be a lot of uh, pathogens that could be there a complex and it's better to use this as kind of a, a tool and then take time to analyze it uh, thoughtfully uh, instead of making uh, instant decisions uh, which could be not good in the end so it's more uh, it, it, that's how we position it at the moment so salmonella presents significant challenges to pig health and performance and poses food safety risks to humans as the first and only vaccine offering live attenuated strains of both Salmonella cholera suis and Typhimurium, Enterosol Salmonella TC from Boringer Ingelheim protects pigs against both serotypes with a single oral dose. Talk to your Boringer Ingelheim representative to learn more. Very good point. Um, and, you know, to that end, as you've gotten to see some analysis, say from PRDC cases, um, what have you seen for cool viruses or bacteria? I've got to ask, have you, have you seen some, some um, things that aren't just one-offs, right? Got bacteria or viruses that you've found more frequently than you expected or ones that maybe we don't know about today or don't consider pathogenic that maybe we should have our eyes open to because of your finding them in these sick pigs. Um, when I look to the viruses, uh, I think very important is there. We always think about uh, PERS, influenza, uh, but there is much more about that. So... Um, what we see is there are some para-influenza viruses uh, or like a respirovirus. Um, this can cause flu-like illness. Uh, we have pneumovirus. Maybe you haven't heard about it, but it's kind of a related uh, virus to respiratory syncytial virus, which we quite know well in humans and, uh, and cattle. Um, so this can really cause bronchiolitis and all these things. Uh, so um, cytomegalovirus, uh, also some beta coronavirus like uh, porcine hemagglutinating encephalomyelitis virus. In the past, it was always um, linked to vomiting and wasting, uh, but we see a lot of circulation in the respiratory tract, uh, really in the first phase of that infection. So, um, so what you should also see is like sometimes we pick up two or three of these viruses together with some bacteria, and this is a complex. So. Uh, maybe on itself, these viruses are not that harmful if, if so they try to replicate that. But you should see it like, yeah, if you have drones attacking uh, someone, uh, one drone, okay, maybe you can shoot it out of the air. But if it's like a swarm of pathogens, the immunity will suffer. So that's really, I think, uh, an analogy to make uh, and how we should see that. So the more you have of these complexes, the bigger they are, the more difficult for the animal to to cope and to fight it. So. Yeah, the pig has the ability to fight some good battles, um, but uh, your immune system has limits just like any other battle. Um, so if we overwhelm the pig with pathogens, with stress, we should expect that there's going to be some consequences. It's cool information, Sebastian. It's a neat diagnostic assay, and I really appreciate you coming on to tell us about it. Thank you. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Yeah. Well, um, it's uh, my pleasure to host you, Sebastian, but we've got to thank the audience for their participation because if people weren't listening and watching, we wouldn't be able to do this. So thank you to the audience. Please check out our website, uh, swinehealthblackbelt.com. If you have not, uh, please uh, subscribe to the podcast and share this with somebody else. Uh, there's got to be somebody out there that's having a complicated pig health situation and they don't feel like they can find the, the, the pathogen or don't feel like they're finding the root cause pass this, uh, this, this video, this podcast along to them uh, so that they can get, get educated on what's possible and what's the newest in diagnostic assay technology. Uh, for Dr. Sebastian Toons, I'm Dr. Clayton Johnson. It's been a pleasure to spend some time with you. We hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Bye-bye.